When President Trump stirred up the caravan chaos and called it an invasion to stir up his base for the midterms, which didn't work, there was a ton of media coverage. Now that we have an actual problem, there's less coverage, and that is a mistake. The situation is described by international relief organizations as a humanitarian crisis, and the worst, they say, is yet to come. More migrants, more suffering, more desperation, more problems. What do we do? What should we do? And how can any of this be seen as a win by the president? Let's ask our great debaters, Anna Navarro and Steve Cortez. Anna, when you look at that situation, what do you see? You know, it, um, it reminds me of things I've seen in the past, being from Florida. It reminds me of the Mariel exodus, the Mariel mm. boat lift, where, um, you know, uh, Castro opened up the floodgates, and in a matter of months, what began with a few people turned into a massive exodus. It reminds me of seeing desperate Haitians and desperate Cubans, people like Elian Gonzalez's mother, board rickety rafts and inner tubes and risk their lives in order to bring their children to safety and to freedom. And it re reminds me of my own story. I'm a lucky one. My parents were the type of people that got U.S. visas and could travel on planes, but they did and would have done anything to save me from growing up in communism and violence like so many other parents have done. Unless, unless you're the child of uh, somebody that came here on an investor visa, unless you're the child of uh, somebody who's, you know, a, a Native American, the likelihood is your ancestors came here for precisely the same reason these people are coming here, mm. to look for a better life. So I see a very complex problem, Chris, because I realize that it can turn into something that will be out of control. You let them in, there will be more. But I also know that we are an empathetic country, and I think we need to figure out some sort of comprehensive strategic solution that attacks the roots of the problem in these right. countries and also deals with the immediate issue at hand. The missed opportunity here, Steve, is how you don't let them in. The way in which you conduct policy, even if it's a policy of exclusion. And that's what, I wasn't surprised by this, by the way, but it is unfortunate that the president can look at scenes of distress and somehow say, see, I told you, I told you what they were like, look at them. It's a win for me and my party. This is bad for Democrats. How can you process something like this that way? No, look, Chris, I think you're being completely unfair to the president. He's not saying By that quoting human his misery words? on the other side of the border as a... No, you didn't quote him. Uh, that's your analysis. Uh, you, you are trying While to you say talk, that he's saying going. that their Mel, misery give me the is, direct quote in my ear. I'm going to repeat it to him because that, you're dead wrong, but keep going. That, well, then give me the quote. I will. Keep going. Okay. Uh, he is not saying that the misery on the other side of the border is a win for him. What is a win is having a secure border. Because, by the way, having a porous and lawless mm -hmm. border region has invited, unfortunately, a lot of human misery. And for decades, sex trafficking, drug running, gun running, mm -hmm. uh, coyotes. There is all kinds of human misery in that region. And there has been for many years because of the fact that we've tolerated a lawless and porous border. And he is saying it's not just a win for the United States. Look, good fences make good neighbors. It's not just a win for the United States that we finally start to secure our border. It's also ultimately going to be a win for Mexico and a win for migrants, many of whom are sold a false bill of goods that they are going to be allowed into the United States when they can't be these economic migrants. Well, we look, cannot take that, any economic migrants in the world who want to come to the United well, States. It's not we simply can, cannot. Right, right. First of all, it's not cannot. It's don't want to. And that's OK. You're allowed to make listen, policies that create limits. However, no, we can't. Chris, we cannot take all economic migrants. I didn't if, say if everyone can, I didn't who lives in a poor all. place in the world. I didn't say all. I said you don't have to take all. You can make policies where you set limits. That's what I just said. Please listen. However, don't say we can't take them. We have more jobs than we have workers in this country. We know that that worker base is fundamental to different aspects of our economy. So. Don't say we can't take them. It's about what you yeah. want to take, and that's okay. That's policy. But, Anna, what I don't get is you can secure your border. You can do it more so. You can even build the wall, which I still believe was a gimmick. It was thought up as a stunt on the campaign, and it was lied about and is still being lied about by the president of the United States. But you don't have to allow people to be like this a mile from your border. You could do more than this and still secure yourself, can you not? Yeah, absolutely. But it takes um, it takes the will hmm. to do it. And it probably also takes uh, leading 
an effort that should involve international organizations, that should involve the UN High Commission on Refugees, that it should involve charitable organizations like churches sure. and refugee organizations, that should involve the countries and governments of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, and Mexico. It's, it's not something that the U.S. can do alone. It's not something that the U.S. should do alone. It is something that the U.S. can lead in forming some sort of coalition to address the issues. Listen, people, need, we need to put this in context. El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras have some of the highest murder rates in the world. Mm -hmm. Part of that is cost because when we, the United States, invested in Plan Colombia to eradicate drug trade in Colombia, what they ended up doing was finding new drug routes through Central America. That has led to rampant violence, cartels, gangs, drugs that corrupt governments in that region have been unable and unwilling to control. That is what people are fleeing from. And as long as the conditions there are that bad, people will continue to flee. Now, you are right. You are right. We can't let them all in because you know what happens if we let in 5,000? Next week, there will be 30,000 walking from Central America. So we have to fix the problem because the problem is not going to go away by itself. It's going to take funds. It's going to take effort. It's going to take education. It's going to take joint operations, probably military operations to help curb the violence in some of these countries. Mm -hmm. Because yes, good neighbors make good fences, but I can assure you that if the home of your neighbor gets overgrown by weeds and gets all sorts of problems, you're gonna have suffer some consequences too. Mm -hmm. You know, Steve, look, uh, th this is not a this or that. It's a both proposition, and that's the part I don't get. I get the politics. I got it when the president was doing it before the midterms. I was surprised the media bit on it the way it did, but I wasn't surprised. He likes to demonize this group. It worked for him early on in the campaign. He stuck with it. He made up the wall. He says he'll shut down the government to get the wall funded. I thought Mexico was going to pay for the wall. Well, why all of a sudden now this existential battle with our own fiscal policy? Steve, why do we have to shut down the government to pay for a wall when Mexico is supposed to pay? Well, because this is, is absolute proof of why we need a wall, right? The fact that they tried to, to attack a part of a legacy part of the fence really well, I'm not, saying why not a shut down the government shows to pay for a wall the that Mexico is supposed to pay for. Well, well, because that's what because, I'm asking. Do, because Donald Trump, listen, he was crystal clear on this issue in 2016. It was perhaps the foundational issue of his campaign mm -hmm. that we would build a wall and that we would finally and secure And Mexico our southern would that pay for it. That has not happened it. yet. Mexico that will has not, pay for the wall. He to, said. Me, to me, that part of it is immaterial. Who oh, pays for it? It will more than pay for itself. Isn't that nice? It will more than pay for itself. You're like my son we, who only cares about the questions he gets border. right on the test. Every time he brings home a lousy <laughs> no, grade, I, he says, the answers I get wrong. You know, no. I don't really try to focus on those. No, I'm not ignoring the question. I'm just telling you that part you to me it, isn't that relevant. Well, I, think I know because well, it works It's well worth the investment you. for the United States. It's not no, well it, worth no, the it's investment. It's well worth the no, investment. If you talk to CBP, it's Anna, well worth, if you talk to money, people who work there on the border, listen, guys, none of them say something. we're a wall away, Anna. Nobody I'm, tells you no, that's, the, that's totally, and that is totally untrue. The, who the are head here. of the border that... that yeah? The head of the union that represents CBP, and you know this very well, he's advocated a wall. Yeah, no, no, no. There's a difference between half, advocating the wall half, and saying it's a panacea. You guys, Go ahead. Before we, we, we you know, get all uh, compulsive, obsessive over the wall, half the people that are uh, undocumented aliens here came through other means. That was True. not the Mexico border. True. A lot of them came by it's plane, more than half. like I did, and overstayed their visas. Yes, more And are than living half. here as undocumented aliens. A lot of them came like my Cuban friends or like my Haitian friends right. who boarded rickety boats in order to escape True. that horror. A lot of them have come through other ways. True. As you know, people who maybe have never lived desperation, people who have never lived this kind of misery, this kind of poverty, who have never seen this kind of violence, who've never seen this kind of suffering, may not understand that loving parents will do desperate things in order to get their children into safety, even if the probability is they will not be able to. But if they've got a glimmer of hope, they will take that glimmer of hope to get them from the hell where they are living now. That is the truth. Unless we address what's happening there, I don't care how big a wall you build. I don't care how tall a wall you build. You are still going to have the problems because you have got to address the root of the issue that is happening there. There are sometimes 30, 40, 50 deaths in a week in those countries. That's the kind of murder rate that exists there. The highest, amongst the right. highest in the world. 
we don't do something about that, you can spend all the Mexican money or U.S. taxpayer money you want building a big, beautiful wall, and it's never going to solve the issue. Um, look, I think here's the reality, too. There are people all over the world, unfortunately, this is just the human condition. There are people all over the world who live in dangerous places, right. who live in poverty. You know what else that happens? On the west side of Chicago, okay? So this is America. We need to first take care of Americans and prioritize caring for our own citizens before we start helping young men, and this caravan's primarily young men, before we start helping young men from Honduras. How about we help young men on the west side of Chicago who live in conditions that in many cases are every bit as third world as those faced by some of these caravan members when it comes to danger Again, and when it comes to privation. I don't privation. understand why so it has to be I'm saying put American war. citizens first. Because, for example, let me tell you exactly why, Chris, because if we allow a million illegal workers a year, which is roughly what we've done the last couple right. decades in this country, what do you think that does to working class wages why do you for have young more Hispanic jobs? and black men Why do you in have more workforce? jobs than you do workers? And what do you see the president saying that he wants to do for people on the west side of Chicago, be, other than no, exploit the red problems herring. there to say gun control doesn't work? Chris, you keep mentioning the jobs issue. That's a that's a red herring because that is a skills mismatch. And let's be honest, it's most of these fact, people are not coming Steve, with high skills, or they be coming via H one B visas. And, so, th but th we don't need more manual labor. As a matter of fact, for the first time in a very yes, long time, blue collar wa wages that's in this country are rising the faster than white are. collar wages. And also, just to end the segment, uh, you know, because we're facts first. That's the mandate of this show in its inception. Put up the quote of what the president said. Politically speaking. That issue is a total winner. People look at the border, they look at the rush to the police, they look at the rock throwers, and really hurting three people, lie. Three brave border patrol folks, not true. I think that's a tremendous issue, but much more importantly, is really needed. So we have to have border security. He said exactly what I told you he said. He looked at the images down there, he looked at the clashes, he looks at the moms running with the tear gas, and he sees a win, and that is really sad, No, Steve. he sees defending the border as a win. He sees defending the border as a win. It's not what he said. Issue that well, he it's not what he said. What, what, look, what he sees what should in the they political wedge issue that he the can gate? use to scare people to vote for Chris, him what, and vote for his people in the polls. The brave, and we, it should not be surprising. We have seen a Donald Trump for years and years who has zero empathy, who is unable to show human okay. empathy, whether it is I'm in Puerto just, Rico or whether it is in the fires in California border, or whether it is to the people on the border. No, the man is weird. He those, has no human empathy and cannot communicate. Those brave people Nobody who defend our border, and the majority of them, the by the way, are Hispanic. That's right, and many of them have okay, families the majority who came of them this way, and they're very empathetic. They're good people. I spent days and days with them what on were the border. They supposed I've to seen do? them do their job. Were they job. supposed to swing the I never said they did anything wrong. I'm saying that it needs to be investigated. You've got to find the officers who decided to use the methods that they used and make sure it was justified. Do the investigation. That's what they're doing. That's all I've ever asked for. I got to go now. I'm out of time. Steve, thank you very much. Anna, as always. All right. So from one potential miscarriage of justice to another, did the president just